Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the channel. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich, and I really appreciate you stopping in. If you like what you see here, hit the like and subscribe down below. We're about to cross 2,000 subscribers. Really exciting. So today we're going to talk more about autonomous drone flight, and we've talked a good bit about Litchi. Today we're going to take a look at Ground Station Pro. Before we do that, though, I'm going to show you some video from my ongoing progression video of the Granville build-out in Prescott Valley. All right, everybody, so welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. One minute and 30 seconds. I actually sped it up just a bit for you, but I thought you'd like to get a look at that. Now, we've talked about Litchi and Waypoint missions and a couple other features of Litchi. I'm going to move to Ground Station Pro today. And by the way, I do have other Litchi videos on this channel, and a more in depth set of videos is going to be coming out for all of these autonomous drone apps. All right. Today, I went out and I did a quick flight with Ground Station Pro. I actually used Ground Station Pro to create a waypoint mission, just like I created a waypoint mission previously with Litchi. Now, the differences in waypoint missions between Litchi and Ground Station Pro is pretty noticeable, depending on the type of um, capturing that you're doing. Ground Station Pro can be used for making 3D models, uh, 2D models, and maps as well. Litchi isn't really cut out for that. While you can do some of that, Ground Station Pro gives you grid patterns. It gives you point of interest uh, with 3D modeling in mind, which Litchi doesn't. But they both do have one thing in common when it comes to the waypoint missions. They're very robust, and you can do a lot with them. So what I didn't show you on Litchi was the fact that at each waypoint, you can have Litchi perform certain actions. Well, today we're going to look at Ground Station Pro. I've got the iPad right here because it's an iPad only app. We're going to take a look at a mission that I set up, and then I'm going to show you a little bit of how you can set up a waypoint mission similar to a Litchi mission. And also, I'm going to make sure that we take a look real quick at what happens at the waypoints. So keep in mind, this is going to be a little longer because this we're actually doing a bit of tutorial here. So I I know long videos on YouTube, a lot of people fade away, but you know when you're actually talking through the whole process of how to set these things up, um, it does take a little longer, so that's why we're going to be talking a little longer. With that, let's get to the Litchi screen, so or not the Litchi screen, the Ground Station Pro screen. So the new version of Ground Station Pro looks a little different from the old one, and down in the lower left-hand side, you'll see a My Missions. I'm going to click on that. And this is not a full tutorial on Ground Station Pro. This is a quickie on doing a... Um, on doing a waypoint mission. So I've got a Granville video and still mission here. So I'm clicking into that. And as you can see, here are the lines of how this mission was to be flown. So just a very simple mission heading up toward a new construction site in Prescott Valley and then having the drone return itself as well. It's a very similar layout to the one that I did with Litchi. And you can actually 
click over to that Litchi one either on the info cards or at the end of this video, I'll have links as well. So now that I'm into my missions, you can see I've got several missions. So the Granville video and still, Granville progression, Sundance, and a couple other missions. I've been clearing out old missions now. Uh, down in the lower left-hand area, you have fly or edit. I'm going to hit edit so you can actually get a look at my mission. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total waypoints. Now you can set parameters for a waypoint mission that will apply to all of your points that the drone gets to. You can also set parameters for each point. So you can have the drone do different behavior at each and every waypoint, which is pretty cool. So you can have the drone stop at a waypoint, take a photograph, start the video up, stop the video, move on to the next waypoint. There are a lot of actions that we can actually perform, and we're going to make one of these very quickly in just a moment. But so, as you can see here, simple flight path doesn't take a lot of time. On this white bar on the right-hand side, you will notice that it says that this is a flight time estimated at 5 minutes and 58 seconds to perform my mission, and it only requires one battery. Also gives you the total flight length and how many waypoints you have. Below that, we have all points or each point, and so I set the speed for all points to 15 miles an hour. I also set the height for all points to 145 and a half feet, because the airspace that I'm in right here, I'm only allowed to go up to 150 feet. Below the height, we've got aircraft heading, gimbal pitch, cornering, and end of mission action. Now you'll notice that on aircraft heading and gimbal pitch, I've done that as defined per point because I can actually have it perform different actions at each waypoint. So I could have the camera turn around, I could have the gimbal tilt down or the gimbal tilt up, and I can do all of these actions waypoint by waypoint. So if I click on each point, you'll see, number one, that the height is disabled because I'm taking the height from all points. The aircraft heading, I have set manually, and then rotation, we've got it set to auto, and the gimbal pitch angle, right now I've got set to zero, but I could change that on each waypoint. Finally, down below here, we've got waypoint actions. Let's click on that. So I told the drone at the waypoint, and we've currently got waypoint number nine selected. I told it to stop recording because it was recording video. I told it to hover for 10 seconds. I told it to take a photo, and then I told it to start recording again. So those are the steps that the drone goes through for that particular waypoint. Like I said, each one can be different. Now, I'm not going to walk you through this one. Let's make our own new one instead. So I just arrowed back. Now I'm in my missions. And you see the big plus symbol, pretty obvious. Hey, I'm probably adding a mission here. So I'm going to hit the plus symbol. And now we've got a bunch of options. And some of these options are very different than Litchi that we used the other day. We can do a photo map. We can do a virtual fence to keep ourselves flying in a specific area. We can do a 3D map area. We can do a 3D map point of interest. And finally, we can do a waypoint route. So today we're doing the waypoint route since we showed off the Litchi waypoint routes recently. So I'm going to tap on the waypoint route, and then I've got two options. I can tap out the route, or I can fly my aircraft to each point to make sure it's exactly where I want it and record from the aircraft. So that's a really great feature, and you can do a similar thing on Litchi too. Now, I do have another video. I've got another couple of videos about Ground Station Pro here on this channel. I would suggest you check them out. I'm going to put them in the info cards at the end of the show and in the notes below so that you can check those out because I do some more in-depth information on Ground Station Pro. I'm going to select tap here right now, and I know where I'm located at. And so what I want to do is I'm going to, let's say we're going to tap our first waypoint here. When I tap that first waypoint, brings me in right hand side that white bar mission number eight i can edit that if i want to and change it and give it a name so there's my little block area right now i don't have any flight time so all points let's say i would like this to fly at 15 miles an hour there we go and i want the height to be since i'm working in this area 
I want it to be below 150 feet. And that little slider is a little tough, so you can also punch right into the numbers. And um, you can actually uh, arrow up and arrow down to, to get the height a little more accurate if you need to. Below that, I've got aircraft heading defined per point, gimbal pitch defined per point, and then cornering. Right now, I've got straight. I don't like the cornering in Ground Station Pro at all, and I'll tell you more about that in an upcoming episode. Finally, my end of mission action. I want to return to home, but not at 164 feet, because that's too high for where I'm located. So I would like that. There we go, 144 feet. And let's make sure. So end of mission actions at 144 feet. Now, if you're looking at the screen and the green dot where I dropped my first point, uh, my first waypoint, you'll notice that the arrow is uh, pointing almost south. I'm going to go over to each point now, and I'm going to change the aircraft heading. Let's disable this first. So I disabled the height. So we're going with the all points height. The all points height is 144 feet, and that's what you see right there as well. Now the aircraft heading. I'm going to turn this to face almost north, or maybe we can get it to north at zero degrees. There we go. So now the heading of the craft, where it will be pointing the camera, is facing due north. I can also change the gimbal pitch. So let's say if I wanted to tilt that gimbal down a little bit, we'll go with a negative 10%. Not doing anything with the cornering radius. But then let's say we wanted the drone to do something at that waypoint. Here's the waypoint action and I can add a waypoint action. So maybe when I get to that particular waypoint, I'm going to start recording. There I go, that's my, that's my action. So now I have one action. As you can see though, we have other actions. So we could have it capture a photo and then start recording. Maybe we have it change rotation while it's there. Maybe we have it change the gimbal pitch rotation as well. That's up to us as we're flying this. I'm going to go back on the action list there, and we're just going to stick with that single action. So I'm going to put in a second waypoint. So I'm dragging with my finger, and I'm just going to put waypoint number two right there. Now let's go up here, and we are at each point again. I want to disable that height because I want the all points to override that. And maybe I'm going to turn that aircraft heading. There we go. I'm going to have it facing uh, northwest just slightly. And maybe I want that gimbal to pitch down a little more. There we go. Cornering radius I'm going to ignore again. And maybe at this waypoint action, we'll have it stop its recording. So at waypoint number one, I had it start doing a recording. At waypoint number two, I had it stop doing a recording. So like I said before, this is totally autonomous flight where the drone and your controller work together to follow the path that you've laid out. And you're there to make sure that Nothing bad goes on. If any emergency comes about, you're still there with your hands on the controls to stop the mission easily. So now let's bring one more waypoint out here. And I just cut it across there. I am going to go get away from the waypoint actions. And let's take a look again. So the new waypoint, which is highlighted in blue, um, once again, I'm going to hit disable on the height. So I could change the elevation waypoint by waypoint as well. So we can get some different views by making multiple waypoints at different elevations. I'm then going to change my aircraft heading because I know all the new construction is pointed right up this way. So there you go. So we've made three quick waypoints, and we acknowledge that there are waypoint actions that we can take at each one, and each of those actions can be different. And then the other interesting thing about waypoint actions, let's get to this one and let's add a couple of actions. So let's tell it to hover there for five seconds. So I just want it to hang out there for a moment. And now I'm going to add a second action. I would like it to take a photo. So it's going to take one single photo. I'm going to hit another action again. I'm going to tell it to start recording again as it moves on to its next waypoint. And by the way, all of these actions, this is really exciting here. So take a look at these actions and read below the actions. We have reorder, so we can move those actions around. We have photo capture. Um, whoops, sorry, um, I was looking back up that. After reorder, we have propagate actions. So if I click on propagate actions, I can send all of these waypoint actions to every single waypoint. So if I want it to 
get to the waypoint and take a single photo, start recording video, fly to the next waypoint, stop recording video at that waypoint, take a photo, start recording video again, move on to the next waypoint. So I can set all of these up. And after I've set these up in one single waypoint, I can send all of those actions out to all of the other waypoints. Now, I already flew this mission today, and I got still photos from several corners that I wanted to get. I tried to have it do the start and stop recording, but I did something out of order. Now, you really want to experiment with this before you run out into the field and do a job for a client. So I would suggest practicing laying out your waypoint missions beforehand, find an area with some unique points of interest, test out the different options like the gimbal tilt and the aircraft heading, dropping your own waypoints while you're flying the drone, uh, doing the waypoint setup prior to flying the drone. I would say try all of these out. As you get more experienced with Ground Station Pro, Litchi, and the rest, this will become second nature for you. And creating really robust progression reports or cinematic video becomes easier and easier. That's one of the really powerful things about all of these autonomous flight apps. All right, everyone, we're going to cut this one out here. And in the next one, we will continue talking about Ground Station Pro as an autonomous flight app. And then we're going to move on to some other apps. The bigger in-depth stuff will be coming. Some of it will appear here on this channel, and some might appear elsewhere, and I'll let you know when we get to that point. I hope that you learned something from this one today, and I hope this has been helpful. Keep in mind, all of these autonomous flight apps have some really great features and some really terrible features. You're not going to be going into the field with just one autonomous flight app. It's just not going to happen because all of them fall down in certain areas and all of them excel in certain areas. I had a regular subscriber here just the other day ask, so are you just recommending Ground Station Pro? Ground Station Pro is one of the things in my kit. It is not the only thing in my kit. So I am regularly using Litchi, Map Pilot, and Ground Station Pro. Those are my top three apps that I use, but I also do use Pix4D's Capture and Drone Deploy's Capture app as well. And we'll be talking about all of those in the near future. All right, everyone, have an awesome start to the week. And we'll see you again here really soon.